Well, got an excuse to do another video on the Suzuki Grand Vitara. Um, this unboxing is the new transfer case, rebuilt transfer case, I guess I should say, with new lower gears. Why, 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 why are we getting this? Why did we need to get this? We're getting it because ours is stuck kind of in full drive. Um, I don't think it was that way before. I might have, I might have wrecked it. I don't know because when I did the lift kit, I extended the shifter uh, that goes into the trans transfer case, and I used uh, this sleeve that came. I paid extra for the extension. I don't know how it's supposed to be done, so I put it on there. It might have been too far in, so it was hitting like the retainer ring, and so it wasn't fully going back to tool drive. And so I'm thinking maybe it was kind of in between, and by driving it, it just kind of jacked it up. I'll probably know more when I pull the transfer case apart whenever I feel bored and want to do something. Got but, it. Yeah, so it wasn't intentionally. I did not want to spend the money to do this. I mean, so, I, do, I do like the uh, lower gears, but. I'm obviously an awesome wife, but I usually am the one that says, just spend the money. Let's try to make it as bulletproof as possible. So I, I pushed him to do it because when we're out on a trail, I want to know if we're, you know, I don't want to have a weak point on something if possible. So this, um, our two door also had this, we sent our core in to the same place, which is. So Trail Tough um, Products in Medford, Oregon. Yeah. So they, we didn't have to send our core in this time. But um, they did a great job on our transfer case in, in our tour. So yeah. we're confident. Too bad we're not sponsored by them, Trail Tech, because we've been buying some products from you. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully they give us an extra sticker this time or something. <laughs> but the, the other transfer case we got was, was no problems at all. But and actually, um, in the tour, it was making her, like a clicking sound. And once we got the new one back rebuilt, it's been it's been awesome because we've really abused it. A little tech tip: the clicking sound was the four-wheel drive was popping in and out, which is kind of more common on the '99s, at least that's what I've been told. And so when they rebuilt it. They put new components in: it, seals, rebuild kit, and the three-to-one trail creeper gear ratio set, which I've been I really liked it. Um, this one looks like it's uh, nice and clean looking, so that's a plus always. Um, looks like it's wrapped up pretty good. So the other part of this video is also going to be um, the transfer case, well, the install, and also this is a good time. Luckily, he hadn't put them up. Excuse you. He hadn't put them on yet, but we have uh, new skin plates to put on the bottom. So that'll all be in this video. This bad bad boy going in and the skin plates so she she's getting good she's getting closer to getting done yeah. so. another thing uh we'll see what happens when i get it all installed but they asked what um gear pinion ratio i have which i like to know the color of different colors and i told them um my speedometer's off like 10 miles an hour so they were supposed to uh, kind of figure that out and get one that's closer for us. So we'll see what happens there. So what you're saying is with the new bigger tires, our speedometer should read more well, it, accurate? Our, yes, hope that's the hope. So that might be a little added plus or bonus. We'll see what happens. I can pop this uh, out right here and see if it is a different color, if they actually did that or whatever. But, you know, whatever. So, so this is out of one that they've rebuilt. Yes, this is out of Grand Terra. Cleaned it, had, made it beautiful. Yeah, they already had one. They were like, oh, you're going to need to send one in. And they're like, well, let's check and see if we have one. They had one, um, an extra one there. So they were able to just do it. So I had to send mine in. So you might want to say 
how much this cost. So this was um, with, uh, so rebuilt with the, I guess rebuilt kit, or whatever they do, um, all new seals, bearings, um, and the three to one, um, I think it's called Trail Creeper, um, came to 1500 bucks and like $35 shipping. So 1535. And it's from Oregon, I don't know if they took tax or how that crap works anymore. <laughs> So it's it's a price to pay. A lot of people with ground by terrors trackers seem like they don't want to pay that much, but it's peace of mind. It's already rebuilt. It's already done by people that do it all the time. Um, I probably could have done it myself if mine wasn't wrecked and probably spent a week and hopefully got it right. <laughs> and if I had to it apart, where am I going to find parts and stuff for whatever's bad with it? Maybe there's nothing bad. I don't know. There's something bad in it right now. So like like Jen said, this is a peace of mind. It's done, so we're over with. We've had a two door. It's ran great. Um, been happy with it. You don't have to worry. We go, you know, 100 or 200 miles back on where we see like one one farmer the whole day, middle of Nevada. So basically, you don't want to be stuck out there. Get this in. Yes. So we can get on the trail. Exactly. Because we got to test this thing out. We yeah. got lift done. We got bumpers done. Now we gotta get this yeah, done, okay? Exactly. Yeah. Chop, chop. I will be done today. So it looks like um, it's the same cutter I already have. They must not have had one or whatever. I just, I'm not gonna sweat over it. It was like a, a bonus if they had something different. I don't know if you want to see in there. If you can see in there, people. What, what are we like looking for? Things here with the gear away from the top. Am I looking at the yellow thing? Yeah. Got it. That's where this goes to here. They're both yellow, yellow, greenish, whatever you want to call it. That's what I already have. So more than likely it's going to be the same we have. So our speedometer is going to be off? Yes. So we'll be going fast, but it'll show we're going slow. <laughs> yes. Just like, it's just like our two door, same thing. Okay. All right. We're going to start pulling this out. Um, one, th one of the first things is just to take the uh, furrow drive shifter out. I've already removed the boot. Um, that's pretty straightforward and everything. Um, there's a shifter there. Um, that retaining ring right here has to come out. So basically you got to push it down and then turn it, um, I don't know, 20 degrees or something like that. And then the whole thing will pop out. It's like spring loaded. Um, I, best thing I've just done is just use my fingers. Um, sometimes it's kind of hard, sometimes it's all right. And I usually put it up in like, you have to put it in the next range, which is like four wheel drive. AC4 high. So um, it'll be hard for me to show it. Me doing it right now. So I'm just basically turning it, pushing it down, turning it. Like I said it's not the easiest. Sometimes that our hand works better. There it comes. Um, you see it popped out. Let's see. Let's pull it out. There it is. So, um, not hard to see in there, but you can see the left rail or the one on the bottom of the screen is, uh, they're actually pretty lined up right now, but there's something wrong in the internal and it's the four-wheel drive is like dragging. All right, we're gonna go underneath. I'll show you what we'll be doing. Um, I've got my usual um, poor man's, um, mat which is a piece of cardboard it's the nice thing about getting parts is it comes with a big piece of cardboard which we're pretty good and you get done with them you just throw them away uh, i had to actually had this one for quite a while so uh, i'll be taking out the rear drive shaft uh, you can see my spacer there um, take it off back there and it slides out right there there's the old transfer case all installed uh, i'll be taking out the front drive shaft. Um, it slides out there. There's a couple of uh, training mounts or transfer case mounts I should say, sorry. Um, right there. Um, or take those two out. And then there are quite a few bolts they have to come out. So all of those right here uh, on both sides. Um, that's all the ones that hold it to the hold the transfer case to the tra uh, transmission. So, if you want to see this side or not, just show it. 
not too bad. Um, one nice thing about a body lift is it gives you more room inside. So that definitely helps. We'll get started here pretty soon. Well, as you can see, I got the old one out. It's a little bit dirtier, but you know, it looks good on the outside, but the inside's bum. I took the drain plug off. There was a couple of, uh, I don't know, pieces of spring or what. Um, I can show you real quick what it looks like inside. Oh, I'm sorry, you're underneath without it in. That's where it mounts to right there. This is the, obviously the transmission right here. So, I'm sure everybody's wanted to see this at one time or another. Pretty awesome, isn't it? Um, what's going on under here? Just buttoning, buttoning up everything. You got it in? Everything's installed. Um, just tie up the rear drive shaft now. And then uh, I did put some oil in it. And then what's going to happen? Try it out. You're going to drive it? Yep. Down the road? Yeah. yeah. Wow, road. this is exciting. Over the hills and dales. Today I'm going to be installing the Asfer skid plates. I have a one for the front and one for the, I guess, midsection. Um, they came well packaged in a box together. Um, they are, have this uh, like shrink wrap, pretty heavy duty um, plastic on them. Asfer. Um, I'm going to be opening these up here pretty soon. These come from uh, looks like there's mounting and stuff. Oh, there's gonna be a sticker. So let's cut this open and check it out. Okay, I got the plastic all off. Um, they do come with a mounting kit um, right there, and actually some kind of instructions. Um, we'll see how it works. This is aluminum. It's a pretty thick. I don't know, a quarter inch aluminum. Um, all right. Here is the mid plate. Um, at least that's what I call it. Um, we'll have to uh, get this one all opened up also. Uh, it does come with some brackets and stuff. So let's check it out. All right. So I started placing this up here. Um, See the sway bar right there? I showed you before it was too too low. That's sway bar right there. So when the lift kit was on here, it was too far this way, which made it brought it down. It's not going to work. So basically, I had to um, revamp my sway bar, and I welded those on the extensions because that's why it has the the spacers on there so now it should be fine so we're put, starting putting the bottom one on or the mid one we're going to call it has this um, u-shaped thing that goes around the crossover right here and there's an the l bracket on the other side i'll show you in just a minute but you want to put this one on first because the front one will go over it and you'll see more of that in a few minutes here okay let's see where this one goes so there's a diagram right there and we're using this, it looks like it's got to go something like that. So there's the bolt right there. So there's probably a bolt hole somewhere up here. Let's check this out. Maybe it goes to the cross member bolt. I bet it does. It probably goes to, it's hard to see, but one of these bolts right here. That makes more sense. Okay, I showed you I was going to put the angle bracket back there, but I wasn't sure exactly which one. So, I would put the front um, mouse in first because those are, I definitely know those have to go here. Now, um, I said that the, the front one's going to go here. It's also going to mount to these two bolt holes. So, I'm just putting it here, right, just to position it for now. And then when I put the other one on, it's going to fit over it. And the reason I want to do that is because basically usually you're running into rocks or whatever like that going this way so it makes sense that it would go you know over like that instead of just sticking down and hitting this so I'll go back there and put that 
angle on right now. So I figured out which bolt uh, was you use one of the cross motor bolts, you take it out right here and they give you a new one to put in a little bit longer. And it has like an angle bracket that comes down here. So I'm leaving everything kind of loose right now. I took it the front one on just to make sure everything fits. Um, so far I'm pretty impressed with the fit and finish of it. So let's uh, see how this works. I don't think it's gonna fit right on because this is made for a stock vehicle and ours is modified. Mainly the differential right here, see how far down it sticks. It's dropped down about an inch and a half or so. So this goes back here, about like, about like so. So you can see right there, the differential. I don't like that. It's like they made it open so you can drain the fluid, but then, I don't know, I think it should have been closed. I might make a plate to cover it later. But I'm going to do some spacing also. So I think we need to do an update on this okay. situation here. Yeah. This is not a um, straight out of the box bolt-on application. Well, I would say it is if it's a stock vehicle. Um, have you have you looked at this thing? So this is not stock. Yeah. Okay. So basically, the differential you have to do a differential drop when you do a big lift kit. So your CV axles are a better angle. So by doing that, this is hitting because it's designed for the differential not being hit. Drop. Sorry. So basically, it's hitting right here. Um, you can see it's kind of scraped right there. We tried bending this flatter, which we did do it flatter, just to try and help that, but it's still gonna need some uh, work. So I'm gonna have to do some precision um, hammer bending. So if you buy the Asfer skid plates, they are bolt-on for non-modified vehicles. Yes, almost all of them are. I don't know if they make, I don't know if anybody makes one. Well, they should. back to putting this thing on when I got some time. Uh, as you can see <clears throat> around here, I was bulged out. I uh, hammered from the inside out to make room for the differential and to protect it better. Um, I just dry fitted it earlier. It worked pretty good so I'll start bolting on and show you the results. Hey you got it on. Um, yeah the front Still working on the back. What? I thought the back was on. Uh, well, the back part is, but you have to line up the front to the back up to the holes. Front to the back to the this to the that. Okay, yeah. I see how it works. Okay. All right, it's all bolted on. Let me show you the finished product. It's one thing I'm concerned about still, but we'll address that in a minute. This is basically. That looks from the front, um, nice thick aluminum, uh, it says as, as for, as for, probably as for, <laughs> um, pretty strong, holds up well, uses uh, factory bolt holes. This is what I'm so concerned about here. Uh, I've stretched this out quite a bit. I think I'm going to make a cover that goes over it. Um, like a bolt-on cover. Otherwise, that's about the only weird thing. And then I use, as you can see, I use spacers between the bottom one and the, or the front one and the back one, um, just to bring the whole, this whole part down to hopefully make room for this. Um, and it should be fine. And then this here, I don't know if you saw, but I bent it a little more straight again to try to give that more room um, overall I'm really happy with the way this thing the fit finish of it sorry I'm trying to get my camera down lower here uh, looks really good 
um, has one bolt back there and then one over here. Um, I think it's be pretty dang good. So it's nice and shiny now, but um, it'll probably be beat up here in a couple weeks. <laughs>